Farmers have to control disease in crops, otherwise you get tremendous losses. Mostly, farmers use chemicals to control disease. To control late blight, farmers apply um, fungicides about 15 times a year on average. And all this could be avoided if instead of using chemicals, we use genes. So what we've been doing uh, over the last few years is to search through all the genes of several different wild relatives of potato from South America, relatives that are basically inedible, have tiny and rather poisonous tubers, and to sieve out the gene that confers the disease resistance to late blight that, we, that we're after, and then using agrobacterium, soil bacterium that naturally delivers uh, DNA into um, plants. We can use that mechanism to put in just the resistance gene that we've captured into uh, a Desiree potato, which is a potato variety favoured by the market. Uh, and then we can get quite normal looking uh, potato plants back. Here's one of them that has received a disease resistance gene from one of these wild relatives. We start off with an ordinary potato variety, in this case Desiree, and an agrobacterium strain which contains our gene of interest, which will transfer that gene into this potato. We need to harvest some stem sections without buds from the potato plant, and we need to do this in a sterile environment. So I sterilise the forceps and the scalpel by dipping them in 100% ethanol and then flaming, and then cut some stems from the plants which are grown in a sterile environment. We remove the leaves and we harvest only stems without buds. As you can see, it's quite a fiddly process. When we have enough harvested stem sections, we can then add the agrobacterium. The agrobacterium, in nature, transforms plant cells. And we use this ability of the bacterium to transfer our gene of interest into potato. And then those stem sections go on a shaker in the dark for 20 minutes. We take the potato stem sections, which are well mixed with the agrobacterium cells, blot them dry briefly, and place them onto co-cultivation media, which enables the agrobacterium to infect the plant and transfer our gene of interest. The potato stem sections are then placed in the growth room for three days. So um, over the last three days, the um, agrobacterium has incubated with the um, potato stems and has infected potato cells and transferred the gene of interest into the potato chromosome. So what I'm now doing is transferring the potato stems to the new media which will select for plants that um, contain the agrobacterium. So only the plants that survive actually contain the gene of interest. The potato stems will produce callus which is a group of cells which are of no particular type. But the plates are placed into the growth room and every seven to ten days they'll be put onto fresh media. We can now see the beginnings of potato shoots and lumps of green callus. We move them onto fresh media and on this piece of stem you can see the very beginnings of a shoot coming. Hopefully this shoot, which is green, should carry our gene of interest. The potato stem pieces have been on shoot inducer media for four weeks now and as you can see there's lots of green shoots which I can now cut off and put into rooting media. After one week in rooting media, the potato shoots produce nice roots. They will now be grown on in the greenhouse and could potentially be tested in a field trial. We're taking cuttings off of these plants here to bulk up the quantities for the GM trial. The cuttings are taken and placed in these expanded peat pellets called jiffies and uh, because they allow free movement of air they're very good for root promotion. There's about 150 of each line but because the ages are so staggered I really need to carry on producing a lot of material so that we can have one final push so everything's within a, a couple of weeks age of each other so that the results on the plot are more or less uniform. That's, that's the ideal, that's the standard. Hopefully most of them will be that size. What we're going to put out in the field is about 100 plants of normal Desiree and 100 plants of Desiree that carry a late blight resistance gene 
isolated from something called Solanum venturii, and then another one from a different wild potato called Solanum mochikensi. So we'll be trialing these two GM lines, and we hope to see that these GM varieties are blight resistant, whereas the Desire itself goes down to late blight. Late blight is a very um, versatile pathogen, a rapidly evolving pathogen. So for this to be a long-term strategy, we need to be continuously isolating new uh, late blight resistance genes and putting them into um, the varieties we want to consume. There's a great deal of um, natural variation for resistance out there, and with new technology, uh, it's getting easier and easier to isolate the corresponding genes. So we think we'll be able to develop a pipeline of new genes that will mean that um, the varieties that we like can be kept safe from late blight without uh, being sprayed 15 times a year uh, to control the disease.